G'day mate and welcome back to Factorio with me, Jedi. We're on episode 24 and a half of our sub X series, which means we're on week number four. It also means we're on the half episode, which means a weekly recap episode. So we need to go through what's happened this week, but first some housekeeping. Um first this series is is dear to me and, and very very important to me um because it's all about celebrating you guys celebrating you guys that have supported the channel just by clicking the subscribe button like it, it costs you nothing apart from a mouse click um and it's it's really about it's really about my way of saying thank you to you guys you know doing something a little bit outrageous well not really outrageous making another mega base we're going giga scale this time. Um, really building the biggest base I ever have, mainly to just show my appreciation to you guys for, as I said, clicking the subscribe button. So, this series, this series is all about uh, SpaceX, which is a lovely mod. It's down in the description. I have also, I probably done a mod highlight on it. I imagine, I actually, I know I have. I remember doing it now. Um, so I've also done a mod highlight on it quite some time ago. You can search for it on the channel, or maybe if I was smart, I put a link up in the top right-hand corner. But SpaceX, SpaceX is a a new end game for Factorio. Uh, normally, you launch a rocket, you, then you can tick off the the, the, the checkbox and say, "Hey, I won Factorio. I completed the game." SpaceX added a little bit more to the end game. Um, it basically ensured that you needed to build not just a satellite in space but actually build a well launch a satellite into space you needed to build yourself a spaceship to get home so that's what i'm doing for each every single subscriber um i've actually got a lovely i've hooked into the youtube api i've been pulling down every subscriber's name and um if i have your name i'm going to launch a ship with your name on it if i don't have your name you're just going to be subscriber number 3,562 or whatever the number happens to be. Um, so we're, we're, that's the, the, the premise of the series. Um, we are launching space components and I just a quick recap on how expensive they are. You know, 100 portable shields, uh, hull components. I only need to launch 10 of these. So like a thousand steel and two and a half thousand low density structures. Uh, protection fields. Yeah, just, just one of those um yeah what's that spaceship thrusters they're they're really cheap but you need four of them so you know 200 speed module threes so on and so forth like all these components are really really cheap really really easy to do hasn't cost me a moment at all um actually in all seriousness it really hasn't slowed down the base much the base has done a pretty good job and we've buffered up a lot of those parts but the final part that we need to launch is the fast and light drive which as you can see is slightly expensive at 500 of each type of type of speed module well speed efficiency and pro productivity module which is not cheap um in fact the whole time this base has been running we have our efficiency module stored here at the end we have 974 uh this is just running with the dregs of left what's left over from the base so it's not a lot i do admit that but yeah we've got enough for two launches currently um so <sighs> Yep. Um, so this week, this week, a couple of things have happened. Let's go through what happened at the start of the week, and then we'll move our way to the end of the week. So start of the week, we set up Train Supply Manager. Um, Train Supply Manager is this lovely mod I have up here, which is basically started ha ha covering how my trains are going to work. So we set up a couple of outposts, um, you know, nothing complicated, simple train comes in, fills up with ore, Ideally, doesn't have a second train sitting on the main line, but, you know, one problem at a time. Um, fills up with ore, parks train here, um, train is happy, train then comes to station when station needs ore. Uh, set up a second train that, again, just does iron into train, train sit there. You know, we've all done outposting before. Probably the only difference is I'm using uh, mini -me's, which are very, very effective, but do occasionally get hit by trains as trains go flying through the, 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 this main track um maybe i should put the depots on the other side of the train track maybe i shouldn't it's fine uh drones or mini me's are quite replaceable so set up two iron outposts also set up a coal a stone and a copper outpost um just so we had our basics covered you know we're good for now and then what the mod actually does and i'm about to have a train roll in here right now is it basically turns your train system into something that more resembles the passive provider and the request chest okay so what we're doing is we've got a simple wire comes along here counts up all the ore in the chests 
um, which is 67K and counting because the train's unloading. And then feeds it into this combinator that says, hey, if we're under 60,000 ore, we can then send a signal into the train station, which will then call a train. Oh, that's pretty perfectly timed. Um, which will then send a or call a train to come unload more ore. Um, in the case of my trains, they do hold 20,000 ore each because they're, they're modified. They're, 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 they're slightly big boys. Slightly big boys. Um, but the way it does this is it calls iron ore, because I've set it up this way, to call from iron ore or uh, iron supply 1 and iron supply 2. Um, so it's actually calling from this station first, this station second, which now I actually think about it. Can we do edit? Can I... I just want to delete this station. Hmm. There we go. Uh, iron supply two first, then iron supply one. Click update. Cool. Um, so what I've done, is I've actually reversed the priorities. I've said, hey, call cool, from this train station first, this train station second. Uh, actually, we can see this perfectly now. This one, this one, this little combinator got under 60,000 uh, iron ore, which is the amount I'm actually requesting, and sends a signal into the train station, which then works with the um, mod itself through the GUI to then call this train over. Um, this one's down to 40K. It's about to call a train. Hey, there we go. So we just added this train, just got a stop added to it to come here to come unload ore. It just automates the whole thing for me. It also means that if I need more iron ore stations, I can literally copy and paste this, pop it down somewhere, and all I need to do is come into the Train Supply Manager GUI mod and tell it what I want to call. So I want to call in iron ore, done. Iron ore magically shows up. How much do I want to keep in reserve? I set the number in this combinator. Um, you know, this one's set to 40,000. This one's here's set to 60,000. Main reason is this one runs on blue belts at 45 items per second. This one runs on purple belts at 75 items per second. So this one's got a slightly bigger buffer. Um, but that's all I'm doing. Like, it's, it's really not complicated. It's really, really simple. It's also... Just means that like I've I've set up copper, stone, everything else in advanced because I'm looking at these two patches going like they're a lot smaller than they were to start with. Um this one we're sort of abusing three times over, and this one, well Yeah, we're being a little bit mean to that and taking six lots of miners out of it constantly. So, you know, there's a little bit of usage over here. Um, but it means that when these patches get low, I can literally um well paste down probably one station for copper and probably three stations or two stations for iron um oh there's a whole belt there that goes nowhere well you know what let's save ourselves some belt um paste down a, a, a couple of uh train stations hook them into the main network and just literally set some set some uh conditions of what i want uh, re requested tell it how much I want to keep in the boxes and that's it it's done you know it, it really simplifies the whole train system outposting for me at the same time if I make another iron outpost rather than having to set a train and say hey I want you to go you know from iron outpost number 15 to go to off-site smelting number four I literally just come in here and we go edit a pen we add a new station I click the update button and then if I want to have iron ore go to off-site smelting number 43 i put down one of these stations i call it whatever i set the combinators we're good to go um same when it comes to plates coming out the other side i could put plates into a train and then that's it i'm done i just have a train sitting there at all times that has plates in it that if i need to call plates somewhere plates just magically get delivered um which is what will end up happening with this base i'll end up moving smelting off-site eventually replacing all these smelters because i just i won't need them anymore we'll be going up to more refined methods by using uh, productivity modules and beacons um to get something that's more efficient smaller and basically more efficient more efficient is the big one um and yeah moving things across that way so the main reason we set this up is we sort of ate all the, our starter iron entirely um we have these two here just eating the dregs of whatever's left 
Um, as you can see, there's not a lot left. And I know lots of people are probably yelling at the screen right now saying, Jenny, move it closer so the, 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 the little mini me's don't have to run as far. Nope, it's fine. I don't care. They'll get it done eventually. Um, so that was the first thing we set up this week. We, we, we set up Train Supply Manager. We went through how to configure it. Um, it's back in episode 19. If you're curious on the mod, I really recommend you go look at it, watch it. I am gonna, or have done maybe by the time this video comes out, done a proper video on Trace Supply Manager and how it works. It's a mod I just, I love. It works so well and it just simplifies the whole logistics of having trains running around the map. Um, it's something I played with very, very heavily back in my Gigabase back in 15 and i worked out back then i didn't like it then and i really don't like it much more now so that was the first thing we did this week second thing we did this week is we yelled at science um basically we got all our lab all our um all our assemblers up to roughly 2000 per minute these guys went a little bit far uh, blue science blue science is a better example we got these guys up to 1,200. Okay, so it's not a better example. Where's a better example? Uh, purple Science. Purple Science is a good example because Purple Science, I'm actually running... No, Yellow Science. Yellow Science example I'm looking at. Uh, there we go. We've got all our sciences up to about 1,000 per minute. In saying that, um, we're doing 200,000 uh, Science Packs research. This week, we have gone through Fast and Light A at... at 200,000 red packs plus uh, fast and light B at 200,000 red and green science packs plus fast and light C at 200,000 uh, 200, red, green, green, and blue science packs to finally go into uh, fast and light theory D1 at 200,000 red, green, blue, and purple packs to, to finally move on to theory D2, which is the one we're currently working on, which is 200,000 red, green, blue and yellow science packs, which we are almost finished. And then the last research we need to tick off is fast and light propulsion systems, the actual final research to be able to make a fast and light drive so I can actually start launching sub X spaceships. So this particular one is 200,000 of red, green, blue, purple, yellow, and space science, really cheap. Um, that'll let us build the FTL drive, which we'll get back to in a second. But the main advantage I have done is we also upgraded our labs. We made our labs go as fast as possible. We upgraded them to a Mark III lab. On top of that, actually, we did Mark III labs a little while ago. Um, but on top of that, we oh, I also upgraded the productivity modules to productivity module sixes. So these guys, being I have two extra productivity module slots in the labs, and the fact that these guys do 34% productivity each means 34 uh, 68, 136% science, which means a 200,000 science pack divided by, uh, 2.36. So that's a hundred percent for what you put in originally, plus another 136% uh, productivity equals 84,000 science packs. So each one of these researchers, even though it says 200,000 because of my productivity modules, it's only 84,000. So it's really not that, it's still expensive, okay? It's still expensive. Like, it's the most expensive thing in my tech tree. Like, you know, work a robot speed, like a thousand. Uh, mining productivity, like everything else is dirt cheap compared to this. Um, well, actually, some of them really are dirt cheap. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 very, very expensive, but we're, we're, we're getting through it and we're basically, because of the productivity modules, it's not nearly as bad as it could be. Um, the other thing I did is I started buffering science packs because I didn't think I had the production to keep up with it. Um, I could already tell you with my purple science packs, we don't have the production, mainly because to run purple at full speed, I need to get... 114 steel in per second and um this belt only moves 75 items per second and we're only using a lane so yeah purple's not running at full speed uh yellow is also not running at full speed because i thought it was short on um low density structures turns out now that i haven't looked at it for 10 minutes it's now short on robot frames not by that much actually it's only the last Okay, there's a couple of assemblers not working. So, 
again, look, we put in some buffers to get us through, you know, leaner times. Um, they've done a pretty good job. In fact, like, research is almost done. Um, obviously, I need to, start of next week, start tweaking science again and see whether I can get the speed back up. But yeah, that was the second big thing we've done. Um, on top of that, the game, or the base has been running. We're up to 190 uh, launches total, of which, what, mm, 12, well, that's... 22 40 22 36 36 roughly um 36 launches have been non-satellite launches which means i haven't got any science packs um but the other launches have been science packs um so oh actually yeah so we do have 145,000 space science actually banked up uh you insert are hooked up to logistics network uh, just confirm, yeah, we still got plenty of room. You were meant to cap at 150. I'm not going to cap you till we get to 180 now. Uh, that should be heaps. Um, because, yeah, I want this to keep running no matter what. Just keep launching science packs. Or keep launching satellites because science packs are going to be important as life continues. So, um, that was the second thing we did. We we went and got science up and running a little bit faster. Uh, next thing we did on our... Well, on the rest of our weekly mission is... Because we're aiming to get the fast and light propulsion system, which is the last component of SpaceX... It's also the most expensive component of SpaceX. Um, I have done, as I said, SpaceX gameplay uh, a, a series in the past. Um, again, might remember the link in the top right, might not. Um, if not, by all means, just go to the channel, look at the playlist, type in SpaceX, you'll find the playlist. It is back in version 16, which is pretty much the exact same as now, um, as far as Factorio is concerned, but, well, we don't get as pretty a graphics. But... The story continues. Um, the fast light drive, normally in a normal playthrough, what you end up doing is you make 500 efficiency module threes, and then you gut your base for the speed modules and the productivity modules to then build this one last item, launch it off, call SpaceX done. In my case, I need to build one of these for every single one of you that has clicked the subscribe button. So I need to make... This is probably going to be my biggest limiting factor. I need to make 500 speed, efficiency, and productivity modules. And if I say 500 each of them once an hour, I'm only doing one launch per hour. Um, the series started off with the with the premise of doing 5,000 launches. You guys can see the subscriber growth. Again, I appreciate and thank every single one of you guys that has clicked the, the subscribe button. It, it, it means the world to me. But you can see how many launches we're up to, and at 5,000 of you to start with, that'd be 5,000 hours in this series. I don't want to be playing this one series for 5,000 hours. Uh, if I get it to, if I if I double the numbers, so I get 500 of each every 30 minutes, that's still 2,500 hours. That's still a very, very long series. I want to bring this number way down, way, way, way down. Um, as you can see, per minute, everything i have here everything um like this is making productivity module threes that we're turning into productivity module sixes but that's besides the point um these three builds up here are doing nothing but productivity modules as well i'm making 68 productivity modules per minute uh, one of these builds does per minute seven and a half Seven and a half is the giant number it's come out with. Um, I need to re really, really ramp up production. So that's what we started working on over here this week. Um, this is a little bit more complete than what you saw at la last episode. If you watched last episode, um, you might not be watching this recap episode if you watched last episode because it's it's somewhat of a mute point. But started uh, swapping over to electric furnaces, um, mainly because of the increased crafting speed. It means I don't have to worry about coal anymore. Uh, started bringing these guys in, started making a, just belts of green circuits. So we've got three belts there, three belts there, another three belts here. Brought them all down. We started making blue circuits as after I hook up the red circuits. Started making red circuits as well. Started making uh, plastic on site because we had oil right here. So this was the spot I chose, mainly because we had two lots of iron, two lots uh, 
iron copper, iron copper, iron copper. So I could do a lots of green circuits without any hassles. In fact, I could probably double each one of these off these patches because they're sizable patches. Um, at the same time, I had a spare copper that I could pull across to make extra, um, extra, uh, extra copper to make extra copper for red circuits. Um, and the plan is up here to do potentially, well, at least, the plan is at least three of these builds. So have one dedicated doing speed modules, one dedicated doing efficiency modules, one dedicated doing productivity modules, because the whole time this base has been running, ever since we put it in, I don't know what episode it was, actually it was last series, I think, um, we have made 974 efficiency module threes. Um, we've probably stolen something, you know, some of them for, for, for something in Factorio Extended has probably needed, uh, yeah, something definitely, if I've even automated Beacon Mark IIs, uh, refineries, no, Chemlats, no, uh, Centrifuge, no, the, I'm, I'm, oh, Robots, no, my reports no okay i thought there was something in here that uses the efficiency module threes maybe i'm right maybe i'm wrong but we've made not a lot of them like enough for two launches so i need to vastly upgrade production and and get the base running a little bit faster i'm um, actually as you can see most of the prod two are the efficiency twos i'm i'm, I'm making it currently being eaten to feed something in this monster to, to i don't know probably make robots or something um something important so Yes, uh, we, oh, and the other thing we did just throwing in really, really quickly is we upgraded red circuits from one old one, one of the new prod six builds and one of the old builds to two prod six builds. So we've also upgraded our greens, uh, our red circuit production. But as you can see with after upgrading, um, science to run faster, red circuits don't make it nearly as far down the bus as they used to. In fact, we've, we've basically stopped making everything down here entirely. Um, so yeah, base is running flat out. So as I was saying, um, plan is to make three builds up here to start making the next research that we're about to click on, um, to start making basically the parts for a fast and light drive. Um, cause I know this is going to be my bottleneck. Everything else I can probably get around. Um, but this is going to be the real big bottleneck. And I'm probably just going to make the modules here and just ship them into the base. Um, I don't really see a point to trying to get the extra components being the low density structures and the processing on the processing units I have, low density structures, plastic, steel, and copper. I could make that stuff up here and make, uh, we'll, I'll work that one out. Um, that's a decision for next episode. So yeah, we, we, we have started making, uh, we've, we've has started laying out the footprint to start making these off site. Um, but that hasn't even got to the worst part because there's always the purple item that I keep avoiding, which for the fast and light drive, it will, the supporters item. So the supporters, those that are Twitch subscribers or Patreon members or no Patreon supporters and YouTube members, everybody's got their own special title for these things. Um, they do get bigger and better parts, which I thankfully for the fast, uh, fast light drive, there is no better tech, so they don't get anything better. Um, they already get premium parts, but like every other one, the, the, there are some slightly more expensive things to get. Um, propulsion systems. That's the one I, I love. Th thrusters. No, uh, propulsion, 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 propulsion. No. Those are fuel cells. Yeah, the fuel cells. That's the one I love. Thousand nuclear fuel. Like, who has a thousand nuclear fuel laying around in their base? Um, actually. I got 200. I got 200. I've probably got enough shiny rocks to make a few few hundred more. Uh, but yeah, like, even I don't have 2,000 stupid one, two, three, four, five, six. Even then, I still won't have enough. Yeah, okay. So, oh, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
yeah, still gonna be short. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much where the where the week has ended. Like, I've got some of this up and running. We haven't finished it. Um, I also have a uh, two build trains. I have one strictly for outposting now, and one strictly for building, which is probably gonna need to be upgraded a few thousand a, a few times as we sort of work our way through the tech. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the week as it stands. So, with that said. Thank you guys for watching the video as always i really do appreciate it thank you guys for everybody who's new to the channel who's recently recently clicked subscribe again i appreciate that you guys just just took the second to click the subscribe button and i promise you i'll make you a spaceship and i'll put your name along the side of it before i ship it off well that is if you have your subscriptions turned to public so i can use the api to pull your name out of youtube so i can actually put your name on your ship otherwise you'll be random subscriber number 3562 and that'll be the end of that so either way i thank you guys for everything you do i really hope you guys are enjoying this video and this series and i will see you guys in tomorrow's video where we start getting bigger and better and we start doing our last research um our last research which is one hell of a doozy but i need to get it done um i need to get it done and i need to i need to at least start getting spacex launches up and off the planet anyway with that said i'm out thank you guys so much for watching do hope you've enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next video Bye.